Hi everyone, I want to take a look at a couple Blitz games that I played as Black in the Berlin Defense, and I want to discuss uh, what my plans were after my opening book ended. So I was Black again, and I played the Berlin with Knight to F6. Okay, castles, main line, Knight takes E4, and now the major move is a d4, but an alternative is rook e1. The knight falls back and attacks the b5 bishop. Knight takes e5, threatens a discovered check by the rook. So most players play bishop e7 here, but I prefer the more forcing knight takes e5. Uh, after rook takes e5 check and bishop to e7, uh, we've transposed to the same line that most people play anyway. So now the bishop on b5 is under attack, and white would rather not trade it for the knight on d6. So the usual move is to retreat it all the way out of the way of all the pieces to f1. Okay, now black castles to unpin the bishop on e7. Okay, white might as well play d4. We're still following uh, main theory. So you get a pawn in the center of the board and you open up the diagonal for the dark squared bishop. Okay, bishop f6 attacks the rook and it falls all the way back to e1. All right, so white has a slight edge in this position because black has this knight on d6 blocking his d-pawn, and white already has a pawn on d4, and his bishops have clear diagonals right now, and black's light squared bishop needs to get into the game. So it looks about equal. The pawn structure is symmetrical, material is equal, but black needs to do some work um, extricating his pieces uh, more than white does. All right, so I like to play knight to f5 in this position to attack the d4 pawn for a second time and release my d pawn. Uh, white responded with c3, and then I played d5. And so I've reached this exact position many times. It, it is main, main theory, it's in the database. Um, but this is where my opening prep ended. Okay, so my opponent played bishop to f4, good developing move, and I had thought about this before, uh, what is my plan going to be from here, and I think my thoughts were a little shallow here. I was thinking knight d6, and my point of playing knight d6 was to uh, get this bishop into play, and that knight is blocking it. And I'd love that bishop to be on that f5 square. So I moved the knight out of the way, which, by the way, blocks the uh, pressure that this bishop is exerting, in order to uh, put my light squared bishop on that f5 square. But there are some problems with this plan. Um, one problem is that this queen sometimes gets activated on b3 and puts pressure on both the d5 and the b7 pawns, and it's hard for black to meet that pressure successfully. But another problem uh, with this move is that my plan of putting my bishop on f5 simply can be thwarted with bishop to d3. Okay, I can't put the bishop on f5 now because black simply removes the defender by taking the knight and black's going to go down material. Um, for example, if I take the bishop on d3, then white takes the rook, I can take the knight, white takes on g7, I take the bishop, white takes my bishop, and white is up a clear exchange and a pawn and has an easily won game. So the plan of putting the knight on d6 um, and getting the bishop on f5, I don't think is a good plan. So there are a couple other things the engine suggested I could do here. One interesting plan that I think I like is the strange-looking move knight to h4. 
and that has uh, two purposes. One is to reroute the knight to g6 to attack that f4 bishop and to get it out of the way of the light square bishop. Um, but also from h4, um, now you can get the bishop out to f5 even if uh, white plays bishop to d3 here. Um, you can play bishop to f5 because before when the knight was on this square, black was removing the defender. Uh, and now white white was removing the defender, rather. And now white really can't do that. He can attack the knight, but I can uh, exchange bishops first before retreating the knight. Okay, so I think um, knight h4 is my preference here. And uh, the engine suggests after playing knight to h4, um, best play would continue knight to d2. This is the engine line. Bishop to f5, knight b3, um, and b6. So I think this is a good position. Anytime uh, this knight gets kicked, it can go back to g6, and the bishop is activated here. Okay, so I, I like that knight to h4 idea. I'm going to remember that. But there's another... Um, plan as well, the engine suggests, instead of knight to h4, which is uh, c6. So c6 bolsters the d5 pawn, and it plans to meet any activity with the queen here on b3 with queen to b6, uh, stopping any pressure on the b7 pawn. And you can just play this more slowly um, and get this bishop into the game later. Um, so, for example, the engine suggests... Um, one possible line is bishop d3, um, bishop g5 to exchange the dark squared bishops. Um, and if white uh, ducks that trade, you can play f6, bishop g3, uh, g6, interesting uh, idea. I think the idea of this move g6 is to reroute this bishop back here. So knight gets developed to d2 bishop to h6, and so on. Okay, so those are a couple of different ways of playing this middle game that I hadn't thought of before. So when you do learn your own opening preparation and you get your repertoire in place, uh, you need a lot of experience with it. You need to play a lot of games with your repertoire, and you need to read a lot of uh, master games, especially annotated master games, um, that reach these same positions that you like to reach. Um, that way you get a lot of uh, interesting middle game plan ideas that you can choose from, and it helps, especially in a blitz game. It's really hard to think of strategic plans quickly, at least it is for me. Uh, let's continue the game though. I did play knight to d6, um, and my opponent uh, played knight d2. I think the engine really liked the move bishop to d3 there. But bishop, uh, oops, a little too far, but knight d2 was played. And then I played bishop to f5. So white light let me get away with that idea by not playing bishop d3. Okay, and then um, my opponent blunders with c4. Um, it's a very common type of blunder that, that I make sometimes. Um, you look at your position, you decide, do I have any loose pieces? Um, is there anything under attack? Um, does my opponent have any loose pieces? Can I attack anything of his? Is everything safe? And White is probably looking at this position and thinking, okay, I have a loose bishop here, but there doesn't seem to be any way Black can take advantage of that. All my other pieces are well guarded. I've got strong pawns in front of my king. I've got a nice pawn chain here. So everything is safe. And the last thing on white's mind is the safety of that d4 pawn. He's just not thinking about that d4 pawn. Um, and so when he pushed his pawn to c4, he left his uh, d4 pawn defenseless. So something you have to get used to doing uh, when playing is not only assess the safety of all your pieces um, and and everything in the current position, but before you commit to your move, ask yourself, what does that move change about the position? And one thing that move C4 changes, of course, is it undefends D4. 
All right, so I'm guilty of that a lot myself, um, making similar mistakes. Okay, so I take the pawn on d4, which is the correct move, and now I should have a, a, a strong advantage in the position. Okay, my opponent compounds his error by playing c takes d5, leaving the uh, b2 pawn hanging. Um, the engine suggests uh, playing queen to f3 here with the idea of putting pressure on this bishop on f5. For example, the threat is bishop takes d6 followed by queen takes f5. Um, and then queen to f6 is a possible line. The engine continues, bishop takes d6, c takes d6, uh, rook a d1, uh, getting that rook out of the path of these raking bishops here uh, and putting some pressure down the, the d file. And then rook a c8 and we continue from here uh, with a good healthy advantage for black. But instead my opponent uh, took the pawn on d5 and so I took the pawn on b2 and his rook has no safe squares. That square is covered by the light squared bishop. So black is going to win the exchange here. Okay, so white tried bishop e5. Um, I took the rook and he recaptures with the bishop. Okay, so now when you're up material like this, uh, black is up an exchange and a pawn. Um, one, one plan is to exchange pieces, unless you have some kind of um, attack going uh, where exchanging pieces just slows your attack down. In, in a position like this, I think exchanging pieces is a good idea. So I played rook e8 to oppose rooks, and uh, he exchanges. Then he plays knight to b3. And I thought about this uh, position for a while of, of how best um, to get some activity for my pieces. I need to get my queen and rook into the game. And I want to trade more pieces if possible. And I was quite happy with uh, the plan I thought of here, which was queen to e4 to make a battery with the bishop and queen, followed by putting my queen on the back rank, uh, forking... Uh, these pieces, especially if that knight moves, that bishop will be undefended. Uh, and if the queens don't get exchanged, that bishop will be uh, pinned. So that, that was my plan, and I, I thought the centralized queen would be nice. It would uh, uh, stop, for example, the queen from coming to d4 in the center of the board. I could exchange queens. So if I can exchange queens in this position, my thought was, then it's a very easy endgame win. So I played queen to e4, uh, checking with the engine afterwards, that was exactly the engine's plan as well. Um, my opponent played knight to c5 to hit the queen, um, which allowed queen to b1, which again was exactly the plan of the engine. Okay, so um, my, my thoughts here were, okay, I'm, I'm really forcing the exchange of queens because I am forking the queen and the bishop. Um, and he really doesn't want to make his only move that avoids that exchange. I was thinking queen to d4 protects the bishop, because that would leave this bishop in a pin, which I could take advantage of. Uh, some cases with bishop d3 if the knight moves, or, or a rook uh, coming into the game here. So I, I was expecting a queen trade. But instead, my opponent played queen d4, protecting the bishop on a1. And that's the only thing that ran through my head with that move, queen d4, um, was, okay, he's avoiding the queen trade and he's protecting his bishop. Um, of course, uh, he has a big threat in the position, which I, for some reason, it's so obvious I did not see the threat. I'm sure you do. Um, up to this point, after 20 moves have been played, the engine suggested I didn't make any mistakes, no inaccuracies, although I thought my earlier move, knight to d6, was at least an inaccuracy. Um, and then it all came down to this uh, amazing blunder, rook to e8. Okay, so you probably see white's move. 
So my plan was uh, rookie e8 followed by rookie one and just win the bishop and win the game. I had many other moves that easily win the game, like f6 was a good move here and so on. Um, but rookie e8 lost immediately to a checkmate. All right, I wasn't too upset though. Uh, my point of playing blitz games is to uh, study the openings and they just get more experience. Let's look at another game I played in the Berlin defense. Um, let's see how this one went. Okay, here my opponent played uh, d3, which I call the anti-Berlin, instead of the, the more common move, castles. So d3 just uh, protects the e4 pawn, and uh, white tries to play uh, more slowly. Usually c3 comes later, and d4 could come later. Um, so after d3, uh, my repertoire is to play bishop c5, activate that bishop, get it outside of the pawn chain, put it on a nice diagonal. Um, and then there are several moves I was prepared for here, and uh, my opponent chose to castles, and I like that move. I like facing that move. I've seen it several times now. I've done well with it. So after castles, I like to play knight to d4 to attack the b5 bishop. Um, and so white almost always uh, just exchanges knights here and then plays the useful move c6. Uh, gains a tempo on the bishop. That pawn probably wants to go to c, uh, not c6, c3 anyway, uh, because he's going to expand with d4. So I drop my bishop back to b6. And uh, here my opponent played uh, a surprise move for me. This is where my book end it with bishop e3. So previously, uh, a few times now, I faced bishop to g5, pinning the knight, which I don't think is so good. Masters don't like to play that move, um, and when I have faced it, I followed up with h6, bishop h4, and I'd like to play g5 here and push the bishop back to g3, but that would be attacking uh, my e-pawn, and I would not be able to defend it with the natural d6 because that pawn is pinned. So before playing g4, uh, I play c6 so that bishop would not be pinning my d-pawn. Bishop falls back, then I play g4, then bishop g3, and then d6. And I've gotten this exact position a few times now, and uh, engine says it's, it's about a minus one uh, score, so black has a healthy advantage. All right, but that's not how this uh, game went. Uh, by the way, um, so I, I mentioned this move is pretty rare. Masters don't like to play that move, probably because of um, the line we just saw. Um, instead, the most common move Masters play is knight to d2. Sometimes they play knight to a3 as well. Um, after knight d2, um, several games have gone uh, c6, bishop a4, castles, knight f3, d6, and so forth, with an equal position. Okay, but my opponent tried bishop to e3, which was interesting. I didn't want to take that uh, bishop and open up the f-file for his, his rook, um, so I chose c6 to attack the bishop and to protect my bishop with the queen to keep my pawn structure healthy. Um, then bishop a4, castles. Uh, he takes, I take back with the queen. Uh, queen e2. And now um, queen e2 was, was a, a fine move and it's designed to protect this pawn on b2 that I was hitting. So queen e2... Um, protects that pawn. Also, it puts pressure on my e-pawn because obviously at some point black wants to push his pawn to d5 and white might get some later pressure on the e5 pawn. Okay. Um, in fact, I do play d5 here and my thought process was, okay, if he takes uh, on d5, I can play c takes d5 and this pawn is poisoned because his queen has to protect the b2 square. Okay, so he does take, and I take back, and he does see that he needs to protect his b2 pawn. So he decides not to take this e5 pawn wisely. Um, if he had, 
uh, queen takes b2 just wins on the spot um, because black is threatening this rook and this knight can't uh, can't move anywhere without being taken either square or the queen takes it okay so um, queen takes e5 was impossible there uh, however my opponent did uh, blunder here um, with another common mistake similar to what I discussed in the last game um, you probably look at this position as white and assess it as being safe your queen is guarding b2 um, bishop is loose but black can't take advantage of that right now the king is safely castled behind this nice wall of pawns uh, there really are no weaknesses in the position but my opponent played knight to d2 and again this is a good example of uh, think about the consequences of your move this pawn was safe a minute ago but now you just cut off protection of it so before you make your move always ask yourself what does that move change in the position and it changes the protection of that b2 pawn it's hard to get into that habit especially in a blitz game a five minute game with no increment um, but uh, it's something that's necessary okay so i take the pawn on b2 which is correct and then my opponent compounds his mistake by playing rook a b1 and dropping the c3 pawn the engine suggests he should just uh, play rook f c1 to protect it okay and white uh white is down just a pawn here um and notice he can't even he's not even attacking this pawn because his knight would drop okay so he played rook a b1 and dropped another pawn and then um i played he played rook f c1 to hit the queen and i wanted to um keep protection of this pawn on e5 so i played queen to d4 um, which also attacks the bishop here so i think that's a fine move and then he played bishop b3 to protect the bishop um, bishop g4 attacks the queen notice the f pawn can't uh, block because it's pinned so he drops the queen back uh, rook f c8 this is an important move he has uh, an open file for his rooks you often want to oppose your opponent's rooks on open files and don't let them infiltrate especially to the seventh rank or second rank here so you want to oppose that rook rook f c8 rooks got exchanged he played h3 to attack my bishop i played bishop f5 attacking the d3 pawn there really was nothing he could do about that um, it's kind of funny that the move h3 is actually the engine's top choice and the engine says yes I, i'm just losing it's like negative 3.5 here black is going to pick up another pawn so knight f3 attacks the queen uh, queen takes d3 queens get exchanged rook d1 attacks the bishop um, bishop e2 so i could have also played e4 here but bishop e2 forces an exchange of, of material because I'm forking the knight and the rook. He moves the rook to safety. I take the knight. G takes f3. Rook e8 to protect the e pawn. And the rest is a pretty easy win. He brings his king up. Uh, I get luft for my king in order to bring my king up as well. f4. Uh, I bypass that pawn. f3. So here I do take the pawn because this forces the exchange of material here he he has to play uh, his king to f1 or f2 to protect his rook so he plays it to f2 which allows me to exchange all the pieces um, before exchanging rooks i played knight to e4 check um, and then king takes f3 allows this fork here um, bishop and king fork uh, king f2 to protect the rook i exchange the rooks off and then i exchange the minor pieces push my king up and he resigns in this position where he's three pawns down so it's hopeless okay so that game was uh, pretty clean i think my middle game plans were fine uh, better than the last game all right so i'm getting more experience in the berlin thanks for watching the video